I have a confession to make. I have never really cared for the X-Men at all. Any of them. To me, the whole mutation thing just struck me as a really convenient excuse not to have to tell an origin story. You know, like, uh, how did Cyclops get able to shoot laser beams out of his eyes? How does Emma Frost turn into diamonds? Ah, oh, they were just born that way, it happened at puberty, it just happens. It just seemed lazy to me, especially with all the other Marvel superheroes out there with really, really good, or at least if not good, unique origin stories. I mean, the whole gamma radiation thing or the spider bite, you know, those didn't make a whole lot of sense, but at least they were origin stories. It was something to work with. It wasn't just kind of some hand-waving excuse to give a guy some powers whenever a guy with a certain type of power is needed. Uh, further, the X-Men never really had much of an identity beyond their one defining characteristic. I mean, Cyclops, what does he do? Shoots laser beams out of his eyes. Beyond that, that's kind of his one answer to everything, you know? So, when it comes to Wolverine, you know, claws come out of his hands, he regenerates. That's about it. That's, that's more than most of the mutants get, is two defining characteristics. But even when it comes to the, mut the mutants in general... Uh, they never really made that much sense to me in terms of being involved in the larger Marvel Universe. Uh, especially, like, the, the racism that, that's prevalent in the Marvel Universe when it comes to mutants. Not so much anymore, but it still happened. Like, that was the big thing, either, like, racism or homosexual rights. But I never got how people in the Marvel Universe would see Spider-Man swinging across the, the New York skyline and they go, There's Spider-Man! Wow! We love Spider-Man! Hey, look, a mutant! Fuck him! Like, all of a sudden, they're, like, one guy with superpowers is okay, and that other guy with superpowers is some kind of horrible freak. You know, like, they, have, they don't have enough problems with the Incredible Hulk going rampaging through New York City, destroying half the city. No, the real problem is the mutants. And I guess you could draw a point about how that's exactly what they're going for. Is like, there's bigger problems out there, but we're all still blaming the mutants, I guess. But it never really made that much sense to me. And consequently, it never really interested me. Um, the X-Men at the height of the popularity was at a time when I was really turned off of comics. And comics were not really that good. Uh, and X-Men were huge at that time. You know, characters like Cable, Forge... And Wolverine were, like, in fucking everything. And Bishop, too. I remember Bishop being in a ton of stuff. But again, I never really saw why Wolverine was all that interesting. I mean, the guy regenerates, claws come out of his hands, he's mean. He's kind of an anti-hero, which I guess was kind of a rebellious thing at a time to have a superhero who would actually kill people, kind of like the Punisher. But even so, I mean, there were other characters I thought had much better stories and kind of similar anti-hero sentiments that, that kind of had similar struggles with violence and like, this inner rage. Like, if that appealed to you, like his loner nature and his inner rage. I mean, Daredevil had that. The Incredible Hulk had that. I guess I just never saw the point of Wolverine. But I'm not really going to go on about that much longer. We're talking about X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, I actually did read the, the origin story for Wolverine in graphic novel format when it first came out and was not impressed. Uh, because, once again, it just comes to him developing powers over the course of, you know, when, when, when he hit puberty, bone claws came out of his hands, and that was something that I always kind of was like, eh, really, bone claws? They didn't seem really that interesting. But, I mean, the worst part was the origin story skipped over the most interesting years. I mean, like, like I said, the mutation part was not the interesting part. Okay, he's born with these powers, fine. It's kind of what was leading up to him in the present day that interested me, like, like, uh, there was always some hints that he went to feudal, J like, he was in Japan, not feudal Japan, but Japan, where he became, like, a samurai or something like that. He fought alongside Captain America in World War II. He went to Vietnam, things like that. And the comic book series, maybe they went over, maybe they went over that in a later series, but the first series I read, they never went over that. It, it was just kind of like, oh, him and Sabretooth are half-brothers, they don't like each other, they fought in Canada, and that's it, that's the origin. And you're like, Whatever. Uh, and also, The End, there, there was a series of comic books called The End, which, ha there was one for Wolverine, in which it didn't end. Like, it, it, he just, he basically kills Sabretooth, and that's supposedly The End, and I didn't really get that. I actually thought The Punisher The End was a lot better, or, well, I don't want to spoil it. But anyway, um, upon reading the X-Men Origins comic book, it was faithful to the character, I guess, but it wasn't that interesting, but consequently, I had almost no hopes for this one being any good, especially since uh, I saw a bunch of the stuff in the previews, and that didn't really impress me either, although I was kind of optimistic that this one would have a lot of action, and it did. Um, so, how to, how to review this from the standpoint of a guy who really 
doesn't like Wolverine or the X-Men all that much. In fact, I didn't like any of the X-Men movies, except I kind of thought 2 was passable. I thought that was okay. If only because it let Magneto and... Uh, it, it let them do what they do. I mean, it, had, it seemed to have a higher budget. It seemed to let them fight a little more. And it, I think I think it kind of minimized Halle Berry getting badass one-liners, which I thought really ruined number one. But... Um, I think there's really two perspectives you can come at X-Men Origins Wolverine at. And there's one is one type of person going in there to see it as a comic book fan, a fan of the comics, and two is a guy who is not a comic book fan. And that second type of person will rarely go in to see a movie about a comic book hero. Kind of like how if you're not in the comics, you really won't want to see Watchmen or anything else. So really, if you're not a comic book fan, you you basically got dragged into the theater by someone who was, and... I really don't think you're going to get much out of it. Um, in terms of it being an action movie, it's lacking. It's passable, but it's, it's nothing surprising. It's basically on the same level as Catwoman in terms of you know, action sequences and dramatic depth going on. I know, I'm pushing it here. But uh, if you are a comic book fan... Uh, okay, if, if you're not a comic book fan, you'll notice that there's a lot of fan service going on in the, in the, in the sense that there's all these characters that you're seeing on screen... And not having read the comics, you have no idea who they are, but, you know, the comic book fan next to you was going, Squee! I love these characters! I mean, oh, look! Gambit! Oh, look! There's the Blob! And things like that, you know. But I, I just don't get what the point of fan service is in including all of these peripheral characters if you're not going to get them right! For instance... Um, by the way, there's going to be spoilers coming out the ass here, so, like, if you really care, turn the review off, but whatever. Like, there's so many plot holes going on here, you wonder why they they bothered to shoehorn in all of these characters who really had nothing to do with the story, because it seemed like they were actually trying to take the origin seriously and having it kind of lead up into the first X-Men movie to where there weren't any plot holes. Like, you know, by the end, Logan has to get amnesia to, to start the X-Men movie. And then all these characters introduce plot holes, like Gambit. Gambit is nowhere near the X, the, the 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 Wolverine origin story, and he's probably the most forgivable because he doesn't really contribute all that much. He just kind of shows up, sets cards off, and throws them at people, and he whacks people with his staff, whatever. But there's other characters as well who make literally no sense, like Cyclops plays a major role in this movie as one of the mutants that uh, Stryker is trying to capture and, and steal his powers for the Weapon X program. But if you think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you meet Cyclops when he's like 17 in high school, but the, the Wolverine movie takes place, what, like 20 years before the start of X-Men? So that means when Logan meets Cyclops in X-Men, he's what, like 37 to 40 years old? That didn't really strike true for me, and um, it just didn't seem like it was strictly necessary. When you could have kind, you could have had any other mutant fill in for that. I mean, that's the point of mutants is you can just kind of invent a guy off the top of your head, and it works. Um, other characters that uh, that I just didn't see. Uh, oh, uh, Deadpool. By the way, if you are at all a fan of Deadpool, they fucked that character in the ass, like. Like, nothing, nobody's business. Like, they got him completely wrong. As in, like, one, pretty boy. Deadpool is fucking ugly. No mask. Uh, no suit. They, they, they got the fact that he wears swords, but Deadpool also carries guns. And plus, they missed the fact that Deadpool is insane and talks in gold speech bubbles. I don't know how you do that in a movie, but whatever. I mean, there's this... They, they started adding powers to Deadpool. They make him, like, the central enforcer villain of the movie where they give him all these powers. Like, they give him Cyclops rays. They give him the power to nightcrawl or teleport and things like that. Man, by the end, you're just like, that's what they did to Deadpool? And by the way, Deadpool is a peripheral character. Like, he's not really supposed to be in mainstream continuity. The guy is kind of a running joke. And you made him the villain of the Wolverine origin story? I just... Ugh. But also, like, um, oh, by the way, when Blob gets involved, this is kind of what I'm saying about comic book movies in general and the X-Men, is that it's really hard to film a comic book movie because the action that goes on in a comic book rarely translates all that well to what's going on on the screen. X-Men being one of the worst offenders and probably one of the more unfilmable comic book concepts out there just because most of the characters have outlandish powers, hugely powerful stuff, and they're also 
they tend to fight like 20 story tall giant robots which if you can get that in the movie is cool but they never have you know so and so like when you see certain things that occur on the screen they really try their hardest to translate what goes on on the page on the screen but it just looks terrible it looks cheap and I could just, I, off the top of my head, I could list so many effects that just didn't play and would never play. Even if you had ten times the budget, it would never look good. One, Sabretooth, when, whenever he wants to move really fast, he tends to kind of drop down on all fours and kind of run. But when you see a human being do that, it just looks ridiculous, especially when it looks like he's being whipped along on like a zip line. It looks cheap. It would never look any good. And it just it's just laughable every time it happens. The second one, the blob. If there's ever a person who looked at the blob in the Wolverine movie and didn't think, Get in my belly! Like, it's, it looks... You could literally put Mike Myers in that fat suit and it would be the exact same character. And the, what's funny is I actually thought the actor playing Blob did a really good job, considering. But still, I ate a baby! Get in my belly, Logan! You know, God, just terrible stuff. Um, um... Uh, what what else? Um, shit. Uh, oh, uh, certain things that they didn't carry over. Oh, I, I remember, I remember. Um, like, for some reason, Logan would strike poses. Like, you know how sometimes in comic books they have, like, two-page spreads where, like, Spider-Man will be all, like, in this twisted pose where he's, like, kind of spinning around, shooting webbing out of his hands? You know, these really uncomfortable-looking poses? Logan strikes those poses in this movie. Trust me, he does. Like, there's this scene where he's he's about to leave and let the villains do their villainous shit because he doesn't care anymore, but his long-lost lover is in trouble, so he goes back. And so Sabretooth is about to rip her throat out, and he's all... He's like, Victor! And they spin over, and you see Wolverine. He jumps, he's, he's, he squats down in this pose, he's like... Hurrah! Like that, and, and you're just like, really? That why would you ha why would you feel the need to like go whoo, <laughs> strike this heroic Power Rangers pose? In the comic books, you kind of let that slide because you're kind of in it for the big heroic poses, you know. You know, they're, you're always kind of catching them in the middle of flexing or in the middle of like really cool stances. But in the movie, it just looks really ridiculous. And um. Things that, like like I said, they were. it seemed like they were really trying to take it seriously in terms of setting up the, for the first movie, and yet there were so many things that didn't follow, like uh, Colonel Stryker. Like I said, the actor who played Colonel Stryker in this movie, uh, and in X-Men 2, were both very good, and yet they're playing completely separate characters in the sense that, like, uh, like Brian Cox in the second movie has this really deep South accent. Um, you know, I always thought you were one of a kind, Wolverine. I was wrong, you know. And and yet the character in Wolverine, while a talented actor, and I thought he did a fine job, had no such accent. And it seems like a real obvious character disparity between, you know, the, the prequel and the sequel that you wonder why they didn't have some kind of chat about that. You know, why they let that slide, especially since they were so keen on setting up the movie. Um, and... The worst part is, oh my god, is the amnesia. First off, amnesia is one of the most hackneyed, overused plot devices, but I guess for Wolverine, it kind of made sense, because you were never really supposed to know his origin. In fact, I actually thought Wolverine was one of those stories where his origin was better left unknown. You were kind of, like, you were kind of given glimpses, you were kind of given clues, but I always thought his, his defining character arc was the fact that he was always searching finding little breadcrumbs, but never quite finding what he was looking for. And so when you've actually been told his origin story, it's never quite going to be as interesting as you probably built it up in your mind to be. And so, like I said, you, you get glimpses of him, like, maybe being in feudal Japan. You got glimpses of him being in World War II, but never managing to track down. So, like, other people remember him, but he doesn't remember them. I actually thought that was really interesting. But um, the, the circumstances of him getting amnesia, like, how does an indestructible man get amnesia? Well, clearly you shoot him in the face with an adamantium bullet, and that gives him amnesia. And if that makes sense to you... Like, why does that work? And, like, they, they even set it up in the movie. They're like, this is the only thing that can stop Logan. And they're like, here you go, a gun with adamantium bullets. And so one of the doctors goes, you know, that's really not going to work. And Stryker goes, maybe his brain will heal, but his memories won't. And you're like, oh, clearly, science! You know, like, 
you just get that was kind of a little hand waving thing like this will give him amnesia for sure but and yet when they capture like when when they finally shoot him in the head and knock him out with these adamantium bullets striker does nothing to capture him like wasn't that the whole purpose of the movie was to capture wolverine that you finally managed to put him down by shooting him twice in the face with adamantium bullets and he just walks away like oh amnesia that solved my problem you know, and and despite that, they spend the rest of every other movie trying to track Wolverine down and capture him. Like, God damn. <sighs> Further, I never really understood the point of the Weapon X program. Like, I thought the point of Weapon X was to give him the claws. Seriously, like the that that's why I never liked the Bone Claws, was because it kind of took the purpose out of giving him the adamantium bones. Like, okay. You've got this guy who is essentially indestructible. Like, no matter what kind of punishment you deal him, he'll heal up. And you feel the need to make him slightly more indestructible by giving him metal bones. And that accomplishes what, exactly? I don't know. Like, like why did you bother giving him stuff when he can't die? Like, okay, he's indestructible now, but he was indestructible before. I just... I, like I said, I thought the whole purpose was to give him the claws. Like, like I didn't think he had the claws before, and they're like, oh, this will make him more lethal because he now has indestructible, super sharp claws. And yet they just kind of inject him with this stuff and la di da. The other thing, I, another thing I thought was kind of silly was Sabretooth, where once was a major character and had all this really interesting dialogue and stuff to say in the first movie, is in the first X Men movie rendered completely mute and seems to have no interest at all in Logan. Like, he beats him up with a tree in the first movie and just kind of does this stuff. <laughs> with them. <laughs> you know, he has. No he looks completely different, dresses completely different, has nothing to say. I thought they might try to get a little more consistent with the character, although I think the first X-Men movie kind of fucked him on that one because, well, Sabretooth was essentially like just the big brutish henchman who, of course, had nothing to say. He was just Magneto's henchman. You know, no mention of the Weapon X program, nothing like that. But by far the funniest thing I remember from uh, Wolverine was the fact they actually tried to put Charles Xavier into the movie at the end. Like, when when uh, Wolverine releases all the mutants who have been captured on Three Mile Island from the Weapon X program, um, this helicopter lands, and Professor X steps out of the helicopter, and I swear to God, it looks like the most laughably stupid... I, I hate to say photoshopped, but, like, badly layered computer effects to put Patrick Stewart's face, like, youthen it up. Like, if that's a word, youthen? Like, de-age it. Like, 35 years. <laughs> and then tack him onto some bald guy. It just... It, he literally looked like some kind of animatronic Chuck E. Cheese, Pirates of the Caribbean robot like that was up there some kind of like wax action figure and i was like are you that's really the effect you're going for really uh also the claw effects like some of the special effects around there were just really really bad especially there's this one scene where logan is in the bathroom playing with his claws don't ask but man i i like i know they're not really claws i know they're not really there but those claws looked bad i've seen people with little ha homemade like toy claws that come out of their hands look better than those things, but man. I don't know. I've been going on a long time about this movie. Not good. Uh, especially after... it. You know, like, Watchmen is such a hard act to follow, and there have been other better movies going out there on out there, but I just had no enthusiasm for Wolverine. Wolverine gave me nothing. It, it didn't sell me at all on the character. Anyway, I've been going on about this for quite a while. Um, my review. X-Men Wolverine average maybe if you're a fan i might recommend it for the action sequences that was one of my favorite moments actually was the scene where uh where he gets in a, into a motorcycle chase and he's kind of doing he, he attacks the helicopter you saw that in the preview i thought that was actually pretty well done but i thought the one-on-one -on -one fights were kind of disappointing actually um the ones with Sabretooth were then and the one with deadpool at the end but by and large, like, I think even if you are a fan, you're going to be kind of alienated, because if you're a fan, you know the story, you know the other characters, you know the other X-Men, and you know you're able to point out exactly how they got all these characters wrong. So it's kind of in this weird area where non-fans won't watch it, and true fans won't like it because they didn't get it right. 
I just think maybe they should have tried a little harder to either make it more accessible to non-fans or to try to stay true to the comics, as convoluted as they may be. They probably should have tried a little harder. And you know what? Maybe the uh, Wolverine story wasn't really worth telling. I think the only reason they really went with it was because getting the X-Men together for a movie is actually really hard to do because you've got all these characters need a license and you have to bring back this huge cast of characters for every X-Men movie, which is why you noticed, I think the real purpose of X-Men 3 was really just to give all the other characters from the original movies, give them a chance to phase those characters out. Because you notice, like, all those characters, like, Storm, gone. Like, they're like, oh, she's gonna go teach somewhere else, you know. Cyclops going away, all these other characters, you know, Wolverine goes his other ways, and they're kind of introducing all these other characters to fill in the blanks if there's ever an X-Men 4. But, um, yeah, I just, I can't recommend this movie. Uh, maybe if you're bored and there's nothing else to do, yeah, the action's passable, but I would really rather recommend other stuff going on right now. Uh, check it out, baby, but, um, yeah. Wolverine would not suggest that one. Um, oh, and by the way, the family that Logan meets... If that's not Superman's parents, I would be genuinely surprised, because they were. I, I just ca I, ca I have to expect them when when Logan meets these guys to be like, oh my god, this is, this is so much weird stuff has been going on lately. There was this crashed alien probe with a baby inside. Logan, would you mind watching this child? <laughs> you know, wrapped in a little red cape with an S on it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's my review. Uh, I, you know what, I'm sure I'm going to get hate mail from people who really love the, uh, the X-Men stories, which is fine, if that was your thing, but it wasn't mine. Um, I also thought it was funny, was when they did the No More Mutants thing, like House of M, I think, they managed to remove my biggest complaint, was that there was, there was way too many mutants, you know, like, you could literally just invent a mutant at the drop of a hat, and yet, when the Scarlet Witch said No More Mutants, it removed all of them, but not the ones you knew. So there were still, like, way too many mutants. They just kind of removed all these mutants that were just kind of floating around that you never saw. So there's still exactly as many mutants in the narrative as there were before. Just, like, you're just told, man, all these mutants died. What do you think about that, Wolverine? I don't know, Cyclops. What do you think, Beast? And they're like, so all these mutants are still around, despite the fact being no more mutants. I don't know. Anyway... You guys, uh, the, the, I, updates are coming. I don't know what to say. I've been working pretty much around the clock all day, every day, trying to get stuff ready. Had to take a bit of a break. But I'm coming back. Uh, as for the guys who are complaining, learn to fucking read. The stuff I'm writing is good stuff, and I think if you give it a chance, you'll be entertained. But hey, if you don't like it, I don't need you around here because <laughs> you're not paying me anything. You know, so I'm sorry I'm not moving fast enough for your free entertainment, but... Uh, I guess I'm your monkey. I'll dance when you when you throw a banana in my direction, won't I? Anyway, you have a good time at the movies because I didn't. Bye. <laughs>